An Anglican bishop suspended for allegedly taking over Punani of another priest's wife. Hi guys, you are watching M Chiki series. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. I quite appreciate that. And if you are new to this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. Make yourself comfortable as we get right into the gist. So there has been lots of stories about people who are taking over Punani of other people in churches, even in embassy, the one I shared on this channel. There's another one, lecturers doing the same to their students. And now when you look through blogs, you have a lot of captions like says for passport, says for grades. And now there is also one for miracles. You know, all manner of captions because of what is happening all over the world today. And I also want to make it clear that this does not only happen in Nigeria, it is global. It happens almost everywhere in the world, including other African countries. Because some of these pictures I have here from different countries, the other one of lecturer is Tanzania. Then there's another one for church, a pastor and the woman that is shown on your screen. This one happened in Malawi. And why Nigerian own is a bit worrisome to me is because there is no consequences. It's only few people that have been able to get justice. Most often, all these men, they go unpunished. They don't have any consequences. So when you don't have any consequences for any action, the action will continue. So the one that is on board right now is this the same Bishop of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion of Ekiti by name Rufus Adekboju, who has been suspended for allegedly taking over Punani of the wife of a priest under his employment and care. To be honest with you guys, I'm not shocked, but it's just sad and heartbreaking because a man at this level getting involved in a scandal like this is not really so good. But in any way, like I said, in Nigeria, anything goes. There's no consequences for any actions. There are so many people in this kind of position who are also involved in this kind of action. So the suspension letter was signed by the primate of Church of Nigeria, Most Reverend Henry Ndokoba, and the bishop also reportedly admitted the wrongdoing. So he confirmed that he did it. So the letter is from Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, from the office of the Most Reverend Henry C. Ndokoba, dated Friday, December 11, 2020, and it is addressed to the Right Reverend Rufus Victor Ajileye Adepoju, that's of Ekiti West, your lordship, suspension from office as the same bishop of Ekiti West, diocese Anglican Communion, Advent greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We write with deep sense of concern and pain to suspend you from office as the diocesan bishop of Anglican Diocese of Ikiti West. This is sequel to your conduct giving just cause for scandal and abhorrent sexual behavior with the wife of a priest under your employment and care. These facts were admitted by you in a meeting in our office held on Thursday, December 10, 2020. By this suspension, you are not to partake in any activity of the diocese as the assistant bishop for a period of one year, effective from the date of this letter. Please report and hand over to your archbishop for further spiritual guidance. The second part of the letter goes like this. It is our prayer that you will use the period to seek the face of God as we join in upholding you in prayer, the supervision of the Diocese of Ekitis by devolve upon us, the permit of all Nigeria, the Lord be with you, and is signed by the Most Reverend Henry C. Ndokoba, M-A-B-D-M-A-E-D, the Archbishop Metropolitan and Primate of all Nigeria, and they send the copy to all these people, Dean, Church of Nigeria. So the thing is this, this is becoming very rampant and it has even infiltrated in the church. Most often, I don't know the reason why people who engage in it do and even the people who patronize them like the wife of this priest now because they're talking about the bishop there is also another person who is involved which is the wife of the priest and the priest was employed by him according to the letter as at the moment the story is a bit sketchy they didn't say how they managed to find out in as much as there's a woman involved they didn't go into saying whether she was coerced whether she was forced or whether she was the one that went all out to look for the bishop all these are not stated in the story because remember that the woman is a wife to a priest that is under this bishop. Therefore, the two people involved are married. The bishop is married, he has family, and the woman is married. So these two people left their spouses and they decided to come together because the punani is too sweet. Anyway, you don't do them, it's sweet me, it's sweet you who go pay. But the issue is this. Most often, these people that get involved in this, they do it because they believe that nobody will talk about it. After all, there's no way that they can be found or they can be traced or people will ever 
talk about it to get to that level so they keep doing it because people don't talk about it and when people talk about it when it's exposed like this people will come back to tell the people who are talking about it that it is an attack on the church this is not attack on the church let me just make it clear because if you don't talk about it people who do it will still do it so it's better you talk about it so that the people who are doing it will know that people are beginning to be aware of it and they will stop doing it i can't understand the reason why a man at this level we get involved in this okay look at the number of years from what i read he is 57 years old and he has put in about 32 years of priesthood after serving as a venerable for 20 years you know what it means it's like almost all his life he has been in this pastoral in the lord's vineyard he has been serving and now look at the way he just messed himself up and he has wife he has children he didn't even think about his family he didn't think about anybody because this shame is not only coming to him it's coming to the entire family whether you like it or not everybody in the family will, will partake in it because when they mention the children they will say oh their father used to be bishop and he was involved in so so and so so and here we are today the wife will also have the shame so i don't know why people can't think about their life about their family before they get involved with anything even the woman that is also involved they didn't mention her but eventually the church will know they'll find out and the priest that is married to that woman also so i don't know why these people they get involved with this some people i don't know whether they use it for power or whether they use it for fame that you want to get involved with people that you're not supposed to get involved with you're looking for punani here and there even small children you see them old men they want to go after punani of small children what are you doing with it you see a big man of 60 years trying to sleep with a small child of maybe 10 years or 15 years. Some even do 5 years. But that's not the case of this bishop because the lady that was involved with him is somebody, also a married woman, somebody else's wife. The husband is also a priest in the church in Anglican communion. So I'm just imagining that kind of a thing. She didn't think about her husband. She didn't think about the position of the husband. And this bishop didn't think about his family. So it's like all of them, they're bringing shame upon their family. They didn't even think about the consequences. So this is it. And it is quite unfortunate that Christians these days, some of them don't read the Bible. Some of them, whatever the pastor says on the pulpit, they believe it. They tend to place their pastor on a pedestal. Most often, they don't ask questions. They don't even bother to understand some of the preachings that they've done, if it is actually what the Bible says about it. They place them so much on a pedestal that even married women, when they go to meet the pastor, whatever the pastor says, they will do. Is that bad that some women who have not had children, when they see their pastor, like the one I saw on the internet, the pastor said, I will pray with you. Then during the course of prayer, the pastor was touching the woman in all the indecent places like the boobs, the bum bum, and the woman allowed it. The woman simply allowed it because she wanted to have a child. Come on. Your mind will tell you that what the pastor is doing at that moment is wrong, no matter the anointing. He's just overstepping the boundary. And some women, when this is happening, they can't even talk. They can't even tell the pastor, why are you touching me like that? Stop it. This is not the word of God. This is not what the word of God said. Because they've placed this God of men on a pedestal that they even worship them. Some women don't do what their husband says. It's what the pastor says that they will do. Is that bad and the truth is that you cannot vouch for anybody even if the person is your pastor or your bishop you don't know what the person does in the dark it's what you see in the daylight that you accept there are some people that what they do in the dark they're very ashamed of it in the in the daylight so they're not proud of their behavior behind closed doors so i mean people have to work out their salvation themselves stop depending on your pastors to do that for you then this is not the first time this is happening i think last year busola dakolo Timmy Dakolo's wife, Timmy Dakolo is a Nigerian singer, good Nigerian singer. The wife came out last year to accuse Pastor Biodin Fato Imbo of um, having access to her punani several years ago, I think about 15 years ago. But the funny thing is that the court threw away the case saying that it was too long to start talking about that uh, there should be a limit or whatever when it comes to pressing of charges. It has been long, this has been happening. So the earlier the women become smarter about it, the better for them. Some women, they send their children to go and cook for pastor, to go and cook for bishop. The girl child, they are sending her to go to pastor's house and cook for him. Even when the girl is trying to resist it, the mother will still be pushing the girl to go. What do you want to achieve as a mother? Why are you doing that? 
if your child is not comfortable try to understand why your child is not comfortable probably something has happened but because you are in denial you don't want to accept it you place your pastor on a pedestal and you see him as a superhuman you've classified them to be on another level of spirituality that's the reason why even when your daughter says that she will not go and cook that the way the man touched her is not too good you will not confront the pastor you say no don't say that they will even be in enmity with their own children is that bad so women you need to have everything married women parents find a way to protect your children then married women respect your husband stop moving from one pastor to the other because he can never help you rather to bring shame upon your family i'm not saying that's the case of this woman no i'm just talking in general because these people they've not said how they managed to enter into the place where they are how they found themselves and how they were able to do it because it takes two to tango i don't know whether it was forced or it was on mutual consent i don't know they just talked about sacking the bishop so probably as days unfold more evidences will come out so i'll keep you guys posted on this case let me know what you guys think about this because it's becoming more rampant or maybe it's because social media is exposing it before people were not talking probably people are speaking out more that's the reason why it looks as if it's on the increase I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this. I'm going to sign off here. Stay healthy and safe. Remember to share this video with family and friends if you love it. And give this video a thumbs up because it helps with the algorithm. And subscribe to this channel if you've not done already. And I'm going to catch you guys in my next video. Bye and remain blessed.